Hey guys, you may have seen my recent game called Struggling Watch This, where this guy did an intro for this guy who's playing a game for another guy who asked, how do I stop Holy Roman Rush with English? Uh, and he was always getting men at arm rushed with rams and he couldn't stop men at arms with his uh, English. And I said, well, you can actually rush with longbowmen kill villagers, pressure them, and prevent them from building up a critical mass that can early rush you. Uh, and then, actually, I ended up rushing his friend who used to torment him, and now, uh, now he's able to fight back a bit. Now I'm gonna play it from the other side. I got a question, how do you stop Longbowman Rush as Holy Roman Empire? And I've found an opponent that's a top 500 in the world on the leaderboards. He's gonna be playing English, he's been, uh, tutorialed into what is required here of him longbowman rush into free adaptation as he likes we're going to be playing as holy roman empire and he's going to be playing as english now keep in mind the weapon that i used against Murple Punky's friend which was nine longbowmen one shot a villager so if you rush out your council hall and you make a quick nine to ten longbowmen well then you're going to be able to give quite a few, few troubles to the Holy Roman Empire uh, opponent. Now there's a few ways we can try to counter what we know is coming. And you may say, hold up a second there, buddy. Uh, buddy McBuddy. Uh, this isn't fair, you know what's coming. The thing is, factions are so, mm, let's say driven towards the optimal playstyle into different uh, factions that they could face. For instance, because the English landmark that gives healing around itself is so bad therefore you should never want to get that therefore you always go for the council hall therefore you've got a free double archery range available to you and yeah because of this you're probably gonna archer rush anyone that is susceptible and vulnerable to it so keeping that in mind it is always good for them to put some longbow pressure in this matchup english holy roman so that's that's good to know and as a result, I'm expecting it. Now, if my scouts see something that says, hey, it's not gonna happen, then of course I can still adapt, right? But it's best probably just to assume that it's going to happen. And then if it doesn't happen, okay, good, easy. So assuming that longbowmen are going to be coming towards us, how do we try to stop that as the Holy Roman Empire? We've got five choices, let's say, or six. Either we can tower up, or we can make horsemen. Uh, we could make our own archers. We could go spears. We could go scouts. Or we could go for towers and just play it very, very defensively. So those are our options. And then the question is, okay, which one is probably going to be best for us? Now I gotta, do, I, I gotta take a quick uh, break here and find more sheep. I don't have enough sheep at all, and that's a big problem. I don't think I'm gonna have much sheep for, for much longer anymore. So before I continue my explanation, let's bring back some sheep. I thought I did a pretty thorough uh, scout here of the area, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I'll just bring back this one sheep. Feels bad to be so inefficient to actually go back for a single sheep. That's the best thing I can do right now. And maybe I missed a few here and there. But uh, back to the plan. I, you can either build outposts everywhere and hide your villagers every time you get attacked. Or... You could potentially play it differently. And make some of your own units. So which units are the best to make. Horsemen, theoretically, are a counter into archers. But longbowmen are better than usual archers. And that's kind of the problem there. Longbowmen have better range and better damage, though they are slower. So the way that archers theoretically can beat longbowmen is by getting a critical mass and then surprising them. That can be one way. So getting a critical mass and surprising them is uh, one method. And then there is the method of... Uh, I I need to kill some. Then there's the method of making horsemen and try to get the jump on them regardless, even though it's kind of a suboptimal counter. There's his council hall. Okay. 
And then there, there's, uh, I think he got pushed, even though I put him on stand your ground. And then there's like making men at arms. So men at arms actually have a very favorable uh, damage and armor type into longbowmen, but they're just slow until you get the blacksmith upgrade. Essentially, they're the best counter. Okay, so first of all, let me say he's got... How much gold did he get? 240. That seems too much. And uh, we have to consider the fact that maybe he's just uh, not a perfect player. Normally, when you see that much gold, it means not aggression, but I think he just made a build order mistake. Let's assume he only got 100 gold, just like my build order. Anyway, he's going to be aggressive now. We've been focusing a lot on uh, lumber. I like to go with uh, at least an outpost here because this is an important source of food. But you want to bring no more than three villagers here. Uh, five villagers. No more than five villagers. Because that's all that fits in the outpost. So I'm going to get as much gold as I can right now. I think the best way is to make some horsemen to kind of scout him out as well. Get some horsemen. Try to kind of apply pressure that way. I'm going to stop gathering gold for now. And I want to get this upgrade, the professional scouts. Then I can actually bring back deer. And then I don't have to go anywhere else in the future, which can be great. So there's the longbow rush. Gonna be making a few horses to deal with the first few. We're gonna make a tight formation in order to be safer. We got, we got. Uh, let's let's start the professional scouts upgrade. Oh, actually we can't. We don't have the gold for it. I need a little bit more gold. Ah, oh, this sucks. Let's let's start making horses. Hey, here's another sheep. We want to count longbowmen. If it's 10, then aggression is quite serious. We can also go back to his base and see, is there a barracks? No, I have to, I have to go back. I can't, I can't get any more gold. I should have gotten just a little bit more gold. So with the horsemen that we do get, I think we should be... Uh, cutting off reinforcements. So we put our scout here. Mm, where do I make my archery ranges? Maybe right here. I don't think I can be so greedy not to make any more units. We have to catch stragglers and then build up our own archer force. I'll put my scout right here. So longbow are slow. It's much easier for them to attack the direct route to your base than to attack the uh, the left side of your base. And once he's there, he's very private. Try to save your horsemen because you can save them with prelates. Normally, I do prefer to be much more... Much more passive and not make so much army. I need to see if he's going to keep making archers. I don't like making so much army as Holy Roman, but... I, oh, no, 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 no. I feel like you kind of have to. I made another prelate, right? No, maybe I didn't. So we have a new scout. We're gonna look for him uh, if, to see if he's still here. I finally have enough resources for a professional scout. Gonna get that upgrade. Scouting is very important. We see that he still has new bows. Oh, we found him. Nice shot by him. So resetting his longbow count a bit is super useful. Okay, we finally have the space again to get gold. We want to go castle basically. And we're going to see how many new longbows are there. We want to know how committed he is to keep this up. 
So we have a lot of food now. We're gonna make uh, more scouts to bring back the deer. We see he's gotten no more gold than he had before and there is a blacksmith. So that actually means he's gonna be aggressive. So I'm actually gonna reprioritize my economy. This means it, it's a longbow ram rush. So it's important to know what you're seeing. And we're gonna see if we can uh, surprise him in the stealth forest. So non-stop uh, horses and, and horses and archer production. Normally, I should have liked to, just to tell you where I'm normally going for, I should like to go for professional scouts, go castle. Is he still in his base? Oh, he, he's here, he's here. We just have to hope we have enough. We have enough to one shot. That's important. Okay. The horsemen will tank. Okay. Keep making archers. So do I have any scouts left? No. So I have to let my professional scout upgrade go to waste. I don't have any choice. I'll get the hunting techniques. And the wheelbarrow. I've got gold anyway. So now, now I'm adding value to my current economy. That doesn't really slow down my production. Uh, armor upgrade or attack upgrade would be great, but I think I have to keep up the pressure. I've got a lot on gold and that's not useful anymore. I could use uh, men at arms instead of horses. Men at arms are going to be a lot more useful usually, but maybe if I backstab with the horses, can I use auto repair here? I could also harass his wood line. Maybe that's better than fighting with them. I think they do a better job there. Okay, we're gonna get armor upgrades and a barracks. Ow, 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 ow. Two barracks for men at arms. We harass his wood. We're just looking for him to not keep his units inside. If possible at all. Look, auto repair again, nice. If possible at all. We uh we go in and we don't lose our horses immediately. Oh, I need more food. This is good, this is good. Now we're gonna try to surprise him. He is looking, he's looking. It hurts. I need marketplace. I need farms. Keep them alive. Also repair again. This could be bad. I need more men at arms. 
I'm farms. And a, a movement speed upgrade would be great. This one, marching drills. Oh, my scout sees what else is coming. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Yeah. Oh, there he comes again. I want that movement speed upgrade, but it's not finished. Repair, auto repair. Yes. Oh, not done yet, not done yet. Not done yet. The men at arms are probably too tanky for him. Auto repair. Scout may be distracted in a bit. How does he see me? What the hell? Keep making units. Run. Okay. He didn't bring a tower that would have been really useful if he did. For him. Oh, he walked right into men at arms. Good for us. Yeah! The movement speed here is huge. I think that's it. Towers would have been really good for him for vision. I, I know the quality of my commentary was not always there because I actually have to think because this guy was actually pretty good. <laughs> And I made professional scout upgrade without using it. Alright, let's use it then. Hi, GG. <laughs> well, let's, let's do a quick post-mortem. Were horsemen useful? Maybe to the extent of picking up archers that came in. In general, there was a counterattack. Should that have been as damaging as it was? Probably not. Um, I think maybe just skip the horsemen. Or maybe it's okay to make a bunch. Here's why I like stables for Holy Roman in general. If all things are normal and I saw it second town center, here's what I do. I'm going to make uh, four scouts and, and, and go around with like five scouts pick up corpses from there, bring them back under the Aachen Chapel. And what you want to do is you want to make a mill that is two slots away from your Aachen Chapel. And it doesn't matter if it's next to berries or deer or sheep. You bring the sheep there, you bring the deer there, the corpses with professional scouts. Then you get hunting technique upgrade and you put the deer there. The bonus 
capacity that you can carry and the inspiration from Aachen Chapel makes you get hella food. You're then gonna get like six on gold, everything else on food and only as much on wood as you need to start houses and infrastructure as required. It's different when you see aggression. You let go of the professional scouts upgrade. You don't get many economy upgrades, maybe just one or two and the rest, everything must go to army. Or if the stables, you already have it. It gives you new scouts if you ever lose it, which is really important to know where it's coming from. And then you get the, uh, you get the, uh, you stop making stables, you make a few horsemen, you pick off a few stragglers, try to keep numbers low, maybe counterattack after. And then you don't go any more horsemen because they get worse and worse as the numbers get bigger. But they do okay against like seven longbow, but it sucks against 20. So after that, you go to mass archers because archers have the most okay matchup into longbowmen. Men at arms face to face destroy them. But because you don't have the movement speed upgrade yet, and it takes really long to upgrade, did you see that? You have to open with archers. That also gives you some range uh, yourself. So two archery range, I kind of like how it went. And then like two to four barracks with men at arms. As soon as you've got the armor upgrade against range and you've got the movement speed for your infantry, men at arms can tank hella shots and they're gonna own in feudal. And then you got your own archers coming up. He can try to kite shoot your archers while running away from men at arms. But the fact is, the bigger the balls of armies get, the more archers tend to overshoot, unless you're like an octopus god and you speak with your octopus ancestors and all of your tentacles are like moving different pockets of army for perfect one shots against enemy low units and you can't. So the men at arms are gonna run down the longbowmen, they're gonna die when we're trading shots. So men at arms is gonna be the key. For him likewise, men at arms should also be the key uh, to hold my men at arms and to provide their own uh, defense. And then of course he should bring an outpost to get attack speed in order to have an offensive advantage when he's going for my base. Now he asked about RAM. What, how is this supposed to work with auto repair? So RAM is actually just designed not to end the game or necessarily kill buildings, especially against Holy Roman, but it's there so that you're allowed to walk into the enemy base without any penalty from the town center. So if you notice that you've got 22 longbowmen against like 14 archers, you send in the RAM in the range of TC fire and that's it, then you ignore it. You don't even go click the TC, just like how we did on archery range. And then you move up with your longbowmen, you start killing villagers, you start killing archers. If you kill all the army, you go back, you kill, you make three more rams and then you go win the game. But if you kill not all the army, but just some trades, but you do kill like eight villagers, you're now economically ahead as the English player. You can fall back and go to castle. You can develop your economy, start making farms and stuff, start like doing map control. From the Holy Roman side, if there's zero aggression, you just uh, go straight castle with five, six scouts and professional. Go to castle, get your upgrades, get your men-at-arms, get your relics to the Reknitz Cathedral, and then GG. Then you win. Uh, if there is pressure, you, of course, exceedingly adapt to it. So you make your own archers and then men-at-arms. That's, I think, how the matchup uh, works right now. I hope you enjoy this. Do Holy Roman love relics more than any other Sith? Yes. Get Arachnid's Cathedral. <laughs> the English player in this game could have harassed your woodland in this game, right? Would that have had a bigger effect on you? Uh, yeah, uh, the thing that... So longbowmen have great range. And the outposts that I make aren't just for putting villagers inside to defend, they're also for vision and reaction speed. So what I notice is when I'm playing as English, to go around the enemy base and harass them from every side is actually not an exceedingly simple task because you will not be rejoining with your reinforcements. Whatever army you send around will become effectively isolated and able to be taken down by a large gathering enemy defensive force. So while wow, he could have gone for my wood line, because it was on the left and kind of 150 degrees away from the entry point to my base, when considered from his side, 
that would be good for him to do, but it would come at a certain penalty as well. 